Hi, everyone. Back here at Comic Con 2019, and uh, this is Bryant. I'm with someone very excited. I'm with Sharon Blinn, who is the actress you might not recognize, but she's from Captain Marvel, Spider Man, uh, Far From Home. I'm throwing out a spoiler there if you haven't seen the post credit sequence, but sorry, <laughs> guys. It's been, it's been a little while. Uh, thank you so much for talking with me, Sharon. Oh, my pleasure. It's, it, I've been excited about this uh, all weekend. You're my top interview of Comic Con this year. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I'm blushing. Uh, I, I think, uh, like me, a lot of people loved, uh, you know, the the presence of the scrolls. They loved uh, the presence of Soren. She brought so much, uh, you know, to the to the scrolls, which are traditionally seen as a villainous uh, character. Yes. But um, let's let's start off at the beginning. I don't want to get ahead of myself. Can okay. you just talk to us a little bit about? what it was like auditioning for this role and then going through the process of actually uh, getting it. Sure, yeah, the audition was the type of audition that would ordinarily be kind of terrifying because there were no lines in the, in the scene because everything was very secret, 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 mm -hmm. and you know, so you only know what's on the page. Right. So sort of the scene that you actually see in was just a very vague description of a scene like that. Okay. Didn't know what movie I was auditioning for. Oh, wow. I didn't know anything about the actual <laughs> role, no background on anything, just, okay, you're possibly reuniting with your husband who is maybe arriving on some port that you haven't seen in a long time okay. and he's seeing you and your daughter for the first time in many years and you're not even sure if he's going to be one of the people coming home. Oh, wow. Pretty much that's it. So I'm creating that in a room with no one and then having to rush and hug someone without being able to rush and hug someone. <laughs> so it's one of those things as an actor, it puts you kind of in your head like, how yeah. do I create this physically without having the contact or, you know, they did actually have a reader in the room. So at least I had some eye contact Okay. and she was a beautiful reader. So she gave me a lot of emotion to work mm -hmm. with and I kind of knew already what I was going to do when I came in the room. So it was really, a really exciting audition that I, uh, felt actually really good about, which is an unusual thing for an audition. I usually walk out of there like, ah, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> Should have done this. Should have done that. So, yeah, yeah. Let it go. Let it go. Moving on. <laughs> so what was it like when you found out that you had uh, been chosen for the role? Um, kind of like this. <gasps> oh, yes. And actually, <laughs> it was actually, it took me about 10 minutes with my manager, like, is it real? I mean, is, is it, can, can they take it away? Right. Is it like I'm on hold, but maybe other? It, uh, it, Ten minutes of, is, is this for real, for real, for real? Like, for real. <laughs> really. Like that. For And oh, then wow. laughing and crying and walking back and forth. I was actually at the gym in, in the locker room, just kind of so I'm pacing back and forth. Like, you know, no way. Sitting down, sitting. It was that. Because oh, wow. for so many reasons, I am a Marvel fan since mm -hmm. I'm a childhood. Okay. So this is just, I can't even put into words what it feels like to be actually part of the MCU. And, and I actually met Stanley at LA Comic Con. Oh, really? You got a chance to meet him? I met him at LA Comic Con 2016. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, it was amazing. And that was a whole magical thing. Sure, it wasn't yeah. like I was like standing online for, like mm -hmm. you, you just, we, we went like that, kind of in this magical, like, oh my God, Stanley, hi, can I take a picture <laughs> with you? Hi. Like that kind of thing. It was like, oh, and I thought wow. that was the bucket list, check it off, done, pinnacle Stanley experience. And now here I am. Yeah, now you are, later. you're part of the world that he oh. helped create. Amazing. So, as more than as an actor, as a fan, I'm mm -hmm. just, I'm never not going to be completely <laughs> geeked out over the fact that, because for the whole year I couldn't talk about it. Yeah, yeah. From booking it to it coming out, I couldn't mm -hmm. tell anyone that I was in it. And so I would go to see other Marvel movies that were out in the meantime, and I'd see the Marvel Studios thing come across the screen, and I'd have this inner giggle, like, <laughs> I, yeah, I'm in, that, I'm in that world. Yeah. So, that's always going to be the feeling. Well, <laughs> that, I, I, I can just tell how much you, you care about it, and it, it, that's so exciting also yeah. as another fan to, to see you so excited about that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> given that you are a fan, um, how much did you know about the Skrulls before you, before you took on the role, and, and how, how does one research for this role? It was so funny. Well, the, fir you know, the first thing you start with the Googleverse. Um, I knew v vaguely, because I've seen them, you know, obviously they've only been in comic books right. in the cartoon form. And, you know, so it's like, I remember the green, the, the green and then the chin. Yeah, thing, right, right. And, and them being evil, you know, and sort of like, I, I knew that, mm -hmm. but not as much in detail. Um, so part of it, though, as I learned more about what I'm going to be doing, the more of it was sort of connecting to, okay, what is happening here and connecting it to, okay, what am I, how am I going to bring my, my emotional work and my, my story to her? Mm -hmm. So, and that came as I learned more about it, but um, it was it was interesting because I didn't know a ton, a ton, which was in some ways good because sure. then I could sort of be a, lot, a little more open and not pre, have preconceived ideas about how to play something. Mm -hmm. So, in some ways, the emotion that we we were talking about pre-interview was sort of like the 
the, the true story and the feeling and of me coming into it instead of playing an idea of something, which you don't want to do as an actor anyway. Right, right. But if you know so much, like if it's an iconic character, you kind of almost, it's hard to avoid some of those traps, you know. Well, and as you mentioned, we were we were talking about some of the interesting aspects. I've been watching this movie a lot since it's, it's come out. I'm sure a lot of people have been, now it's on Blu-ray. <laughs> um, but uh, I feel like it's something that you pick up new things every time uh, you watch it. And there's so many themes in this movie that are, uh, they speak to what we're going through currently yes. uh, in many ways. <laughs> Uh, one aspect Indeed. we talked about was the the scrolls are obviously seen as uh, a sympathetic uh, uh, people in this. They're they're refugees. They have been uh, driven from their home. War has has made them make a lot of hard choices. Yes. Um, and and they, and it's not just a like oh good guy bad guy. I mean uh, Ben Mendelsohn who plays your husband has a has a very important line in that scene where he says like hey. Are, are, Everyone's hands are dirty. My hands are just as dirty yes. as as yours, Carol. Yes. And so, could you just talk a little bit about that aspect of, of the scrolls and 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 what it meant to you? Um, first of all, just being part of the MCU, of course, is great. And then being part of the MCU with the first female lead superhero movie, because um, as an activist and a feminist, that's sort of super jazzy for me. Right, right. <laughs> and then first female director in the MCU as well, with Anna Bowden, with her teammate Ryan Fleck. Um, so those aspects, and then as far as the story, those moments, even though I th what we were talking about earlier, it's it's a small but significant role and, and a pivotal point where the huge lesson of you don't know who people are, you know, and to not uh, put this cover over things of what you think you know about someone before you kind of get to know their story and what's going on and what kind of created the, the person who they are or the alien that they are. Right. And even actually one of Ben's lines that I think that I think is even really powerful is when he t tells her, Carol, you know, you're looking at us, uh, you know, through the eyes, of, you're calling us a terrorist, but you're looking at us through the eyes of the accuser. So it's so interesting, that message, and then mm -hmm. also us as refugees, and we just, we just want to f live in peace and find a peaceful place to live. And so all those aspects, and for me personally, I could draw on my, my cancer survivorship experience for you know, the fickle, fleeting nature of life and, you know, the possibility of losing people or people losing me or just all these things about transitional things in life and not knowing what's going to happen and uh, the passion and the, the, the verve for life and love and when you're reunited with someone that you really care about, just how much that means, you mm -hmm. know. So uh, just all of that coming to bear is just amazing to have that in you know a superhero movie but it's so yeah, much sure. more and that's why I love Marvel too they're always so much deeper than that definitely agree I think the MCU has been doing a, a fantastic job of, of speaking to uh, basically telling fun stories but also yeah. even though I don't think that they're made specifically for children what I find is someone who grew up with things like Star Wars yes they're they have moral messages that are so important they're for totally. young people to hear yeah. and old people messages, as well but yeah. but but you know it's never too late to hear those messages yeah. and sometimes people need reminders of those messages you know mm -hmm. that's also a, for me I was you know, a nerd geek whatever so uh, what I love about Marvel is like the things that are seen as your flaw are end up being your superpower yeah I just love that it's very true yeah <laughs> um, obviously you can't uh, you know speak to any spoilers we know M yeah, the no spoilers. MCU is very very <laughs> uh, locked it down and they should yes. be uh, but from just from an actor's perspective, even if it ends up being revealed down the road that maybe uh, you know for your own work it's not exactly what they plan. For you, yeah. who is? What do we as an audience not know about Soren that you do? Who is she? <laughs> and like, what did you have to do create to that that perhaps is not on the screen? You know. Um, it's interesting because you know, I think someone asked me once, like, what what would what's Soren's favorite food? And it's sort of again, I'm like, okay, what is my favorite food? You know. <laughs> so I think about okay, I love artichokes, and then I thought, well, do they have artichokes in outer space? I don't know. Um, so it's sort of like. I don't know if you don't see everything that you need to know except for certain life details, mm -hmm. but just, she's a powerful woman, she is devoted to family, and she's, she's fierce, but also very vulnerable and sensitive, and I hope that comes through, yeah. Excellent. Before we transition out of the scrawl world into okay. some of your personal projects, one thing I just wanted to ask uh, was, um, again, obviously no spoilers, but what, what were your experiences for the post credit sequence of Spider-Man? Spider we see you, see your character back in the MCU, and, and clearly time has passed, and yes. you have a new job. <laughs> So, uh, you know, what, 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 what was that uh, experience like and, and what were you told uh, 
you know, about that scene? Uh, again, told nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and apparently, one thing I do know, it was a last minute script change. We sh shot that about a month or five weeks before the oh, movie Oh, really? Came out. <laughs> really? So there was a go to where we're shooting for a day or less than 24 hours and shoot it and then just I had the one page of what was relevant for me mm -hmm. <laughs> didn't know anything else um, so that was great and of course very exciting to get back in the you know prosthetics and be started again and work with Ben again and it's such a it's such a fun scene we got to do a lot of improv we had a, again a very skeletal this is what's doing and some some of the lines and then he, they just let us kind of riff between the two of us and do our little improv back and forth you know, <laughs> Talos and Soren banter that apparently people really like. <laughs> so. it, it, it is great. You guys are, are fantastic <laughs> together. And I, if I have any uh, indication from my own geekiness and my geek radar is going up, I think we're going to be seeing these characters uh, again. I think they're, I you know, so. I hope so too. I hope so I too. A couple people said you guys should have your own sitcom. Oh, seriously. <laughs> we should. The Scrolls. The Scrolls. <laughs> Scroll Duggery. Yeah, you know, exactly. Something. Exactly. <laughs> Well, let's let's definitely talk about uh, your organization. That uh, is a it's an ovarian cancer organization. Yes. Uh, it's called B uh, Bald is Beautiful. Bald is Beautiful. And so, uh, tell our, our viewers a little bit about it. Uh, why why you got it started? Uh, why it's so important to you? And, and what they should know about it. Okay, um, I started Bald is Beautiful. I am an ovarian cancer survivor. Uh, Sixteen and a half years as of January. Mm -hmm. Um, and I lost. I had long hair, and I lost my hair during chemo. And uh, it was this kind of striking experience of okay, okay, now I'm questioning. It was a really strong sense of my identity was attached to my hair. Yeah. And okay, so who am I without my hair? And am I still pretty? And am I still a woman if I don't have ovaries? And all these things that biologically sure, define sure. us as women, supposedly. <laughs> so I just felt the imbalance of these societal pressures, right. even more exaggerated than we might already every day feel them when we're saturated with all these impossible standards of beauty around us everywhere. Um, which I always kind of rebelled against anyway, um, or didn't fit into exactly. So it, it sort of was, okay, I need to do something about that kind of thing. And then this event happened where a picture ended up in the paper with me and another bald woman, and we were laughing and smiling, and there's this joyful, this photo that made people feel happy looking at it. Yeah. It connected the dots of like, oh, the power of the image to change how people perceive themselves or perceive each other or a certain experience. And also, I didn't see anyone that looked like me in okay. TV and film. Sure, I was 28 yeah. at the time. And so everyone was older. They looked like they were about to keel over. They were always covering their heads in like misfitting scarves and bad wigs and stuff. And it's like, if you're going to do it, at least wear a wig that's good or a scarf that's tied. You mm -hmm. know, so it just everything made me feel worse than I felt sure. in, different, in different moments. And I said, you know, I've got to put some other image, images out there. And this industry is, actually controls it. And we can put stuff in there that's out there that's more of a like a societal hug. Of like, oh, if I'm going to lose my hair or not, I'm going to be ugly, but I'm going to look like that woman in that magazine or the woman in that TV show. And so it can be just it's just a different affirmation. It's not shutting down other stuff, but it's sort of adding to the envelope. It's, it's, it's another example how representation is hugely important. Yes, exactly. And you don't always think of all aspects of it. Exactly. And those are really subtle. Th I mean, maybe they're not so subtle, but it's it's sort of... I would get feedback from people like, oh, I'm going to send that photo of, the, of you and the woman to my aunt who's going through treatment because it's going to make her feel better. It was just, it was this kind of literal spark of like, oh, okay, when I finish with the cancer thing, I'm going to do Bald is Beautiful. You well, know? That, that's, and that's fantastic. New adventure. Also, didn't want to have a, an idea that I set aside on the back burner because I had done that a lot in yeah. my life. And I just, you know what? I'm, I don't want to say that would have been cool to try it. I want to like do everything I can to see if it can su succeed. And then if it doesn't, I can say at least I tried to do it. Sure, sure. You know? And then 15, 16 years later, <laughs> you know, the quick path <laughs> to well, this happening. Sure, And sure. I get to be bald, even though I'm green, it's I'm perfect. bald. You know? It's perfect. It's <laughs> perfect. Yeah. Well, uh, it's, that's an amazing thing. I'm, I'm so you. glad that you, uh, you know, were able to get that started and see that through. Is there... Uh, for people that are not here at Comic-Con or want to check out the, the organization or help yes. in any manner, is there somewhere they could go? Um, yeah, the website is baldisbeautiful.org, baldisbeautiful.org. I'm on Instagram and at bald.is.beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and the website is for everyone, you know, and share it. The main, the main thing is for people to share it and share the message with people they think it might be a good resource for information, inspiration, a good laugh here and there, okay. fun photos, you know, stuff like that. So it's really out there. We're open 24-7, 365. <laughs> Excellent. Well, we're going to wrap up with uh, one of our favorite questions at Fanbase Press. It's uh, something where we like to find out what the you are a fan of. The yeah, the question. trick question. <laughs> this is the one where you never have a plan for. Uh, but no, yeah, we love uh, we love new experiences here. We love we believe someone uh, that people are a fan 
of everything or, or a fan of something. Everyone's a fan of something, rather. Um, yes. So, <laughs> you know, it doesn't have to be geek-related, but uh, what, is there anything that you have been experiencing in your life uh, recently that you would uh, be a fan of? Um, it's so interesting because, <laughs> yeah, it's like that tabula rasa. I had no nothing now. Right. Um, but then after I thought about it for just a second, the first thing that popped in my head, this is really hippy trippy dippy but I'm a fan of love. <laughs> It's an important thing. It's, la it's sometimes lacking in our world. I'm a you fan know? of love, kindness, and empathy. Empathy is my superpower, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm a fan of that. I'm also a huge fan of Law and Order. I don't know how those things fit, but they are. I can watch marathons of Law and Order. My dream is to be on that show one day so I can work with Mariska Hargitay, who's another activist like myself. She does. She really uses her platform to change the world in positive ways. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I'm a total Law & Order geek freak. Dick Wolf, call me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I can check out, I have Kevin Feige. Let me just get some Dick Wolf after. <laughs> um, but yeah, love, kindness, and empathy. So important and essential. And we need it so much more now than ever. Uh, I think that's a perfect message uh, to end on. Thank you so much for talking with Thank us. Thank you. And we can't wait to see more of you in the MCU. Me All too. right. Thank you. And this has been Brian Dillon with Fanbase Press. We're here at Comic-Con, and if you want to see more of our Comic-Con interviews, you can go to fanbasepress.com.